I'm so, just so pleased to be talking with Natalie Legore, a Jamaican who has been living in Trinidad and Tobago for a number of years. But um, I'm remembering you when I first met you at summer school at Caramac. And mm -hmm. an image that never leaves me is that so often you had your head down on the desk. Let's talk about a diagnosis you got when you were in third form uh. at Hampton School. Whew. I need to woosa a little bit. Yes. So when I was 15, hmm, I just remember before I used to be getting a lot of, <laughs> well, you see, you came prepared. <laughs> Thank you. I used to be getting a lot of joint pains. Joint? Yeah. Just severe joint pains. Of course, it, it probably would have started sometime even before I got the diagnosis. But of course, you know, old people, they tell you, you romp too much, you know? not having the knowledge. We didn't have the knowledge either, but at some point my mother took me to Dr. Stair and I remember him <laughs> saying to mommy that it's either rheumatic fever, rheumatoid arthritis, or systemic lupus. Now, of course, I've heard of rheumatic fever. I have a grandmother. I've heard of rheumatoid, rheumatoid arthritis. I never heard of systemic lupus before. And so we did some blood test results and when it came back, it said I had lupus. At the time, it meant nothing to me. I cry now, just looking at all that I have been through. I'm happy to be here, but man, it has been a journey. How difficult was it for you as a 15-year-old, you and your mom, when the doctor gave you that diagnosis? As I said at the time, Auntie Faye, I think the ignorance as to what lupus really meant, what it was about, what I needed to do survive, to survive, we did not have that knowledge. What does what lupus mean? It's an autoimmune disease, and, and in layman's term, it's just your immune system attacking its, its own self. So instead of recognizing it as something that protects you, it fights against you. So your body is just constantly under stress. You know, so, and it, it, it can affect any of your organs. Of course, by now you know I'm a dialysis patient. I have to go to dialysis three times a week for the rest of my life. So I'm just 39 years old. Who goes through that, somebody may ask. Why do I have this burden to carry, you know? So between 15 and now, first of all, the <coughs> diagnosis was lupus. Yeah. And then lots of medication. What was some oh. of the medications you had to take? Oh my God, I think I've taken almost anything. Cyclophosphamide, Plaquenil, in numerous pressure tablets. Some of them you can't even pressure remember. Pressure tablets? Why were you taking pressure tablets? Because by the time I was 21, I was hypertensive with the lupus. By the time I was 26, I was in stage three renal failure. By the time I was 34, I had to start dialysis. And you're not stage five? And, of course. Full-fledged renal failure. Yeah. So how do you cope from day to day? <laughs> Let us start thanking all the people who have supported me because I don't think that this is a journey that anybody can survive without a good support system. Who so, are these people? Oh Lord, the parents, of course. You know, and I've just had, I consider even you one of my supporters. You know, I was talking to, to the, <laughs> the former chief of defense staff in the waiting room and I was saying to him that you were somebody who always looked out for me. And we don't miss these things because we feel as if we're on borrowed time. Mm. So when you have people who take an interest in you and take an interest in your survival, you pay attention to it, you recognize them and you appreciate them. So for you being at, at, at Carmack, would I have been able to get through Carmack without you? I don't know. Maybe you would because you had such a fighting spirit. Well, I do, you know, but probably the fighting spirit comes from the support that I have. Indeed. You know, it comes from, it's knowing that Natalie, there are people out there who are rooting for you. I have a family, I have a network, I have people in Trinidad and Tobago who've taken me and who've taken me into their homes. When I get sick, I have people who rush to the hospital in panic as if I'm their own children, I'm their own child. The woman who I'm here with now, Mrs. Charles, Alice Langeddes Granger, who took me into their home when I was on my back, I couldn't do anything for myself. Selby Leslie, Darian Marcel, my co-host. You know, they're just people who, 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 who are always there. And because of that, even if I had the fighting spirit before, I feel as if I want to continue. Yeah. Because there are people who are there who are helping me, who are molding me, who are saying to me, Natalie, we've got you. 
We got you, girl. Yes, and that's important. Yeah. You, you can't, you, but listen, you, know, you can't go through this without a support system. Indeed. You're going to die. That's just the reality. You are, and I've watched so many people die in dialysis. I lost a patient, a former patient, just about a week and a half ago. A, a friend? Somebody who, who would dial drive dialysis yes, together? Mr. Okay. Crooks. He's yeah. the latest. Yeah. I can't remember all their names. But you know, Natalie, when I tell you you're super strong, I mean that sincerely, because you got your diagnosis of lupus at 15. A year later, your mom was gone. Yeah. How, yep. how did you manage that? I don't think I managed, and I don't even think the family realized that I wasn't managing. We don't know about grief and the different stages. You're talking about 1996. I am from rural Jamaica, St. Elizabeth. How much knowledge do you think we have? at that point so that you could say okay Natalie is experiencing this let us help her through them I just remember sometimes just being on campus just being like this and just bawling my eyes out because I don't know what else to do but your dad was there and grandma your grandmother what a oh. wonderful lady <laughs> remind me of her name Joyce Louise Smith I knew that would make you laugh <laughs> of course <laughs> you know what kind of grandmother was she oh my god just I mean, everybody says that their grandmother is amazing, but what stands out to me about my grandmother is her quiet resilience. Growing up eight children, really and truly without fathers, even though their names may be on birth certificate, then taking all the grandchildren and growing them up. My grandmother did something that I don't even know if she recognized the kind of impact it would have on the family. And Tiffy, when I tell you that I grew up with all of my cousins, I grew up with all of my cousins, all of them. If somebody sired a child, my grandmother say, if you never got it, your name couldn't call, mm. bring a pitney come. Ooh, so she just took all the children. Every single what was one her name? of us. Joyce Louise Smith. And she passed on in 2018. Yep. My guest is Natalie Lagore. Quite a story. I don't know, do you have lupus? Do you know somebody who has lupus? Um, are you hypertensive? Are you doing dialysis, she has all of these and is managing as best she can. But she reminds myself and others that she couldn't do it without her support system. We'll be right back for the final segment after this.